Hey everybody, Longhorn Whistler here, and today we are going to be installing Windows Whistler 2267, or as some call it, Microsoft Codename Whistler 2267. Um, this build is a professional build, so it's kind of like Windows XP Professional, where it has the um, more business-oriented features. And that's pretty much all I've got for you right now. So we're going to create a new virtual machine. Select Typical, and then click Next. Choose your installer, disk image, beta collection, beta archive FTP, beta operating systems, PC, and this is if you have something from beta archive. This is where it would be located. Windows XP Whistler, and I'm going to pick my build, which is going to be 2267, select my edition, as you can see right here, it says professional. That's how you kind of know the difference. Media ISO. And choose my ISO image. And then click next. Choose your operating system. Um, you can either choose XP or Windows 2000. Although this is more towards the Windows 2000 era than it is towards the XP era. So click next. And then name your VM. So, Microsoft. Code name Whistler 2267 video. Next, store disk as a single file. Click next and click finish. Then the next thing we need to do is power on the machine. Press escape. We get to the boot menu. Enter setup. And we need to change our BIOS state to 9. 11 2000 um, this is a 90 day evaluation so n if at any point the evaluation expires which would be 90 days after the date we just set then you will need to set the date back again okay so set up a starting whistler and again this has windows whistler um, in Windows XP, they get rid of the branding and they just have Windows Setup at this portion. And they just have Setup as starting Windows instead of starting Windows Whistler. Okay, so here's the beginning of the tech setup. Uh, we're going to press Enter, and we're going to press Enter again. But this time, we are not going to choose um, the... If you'd like this feed to use this feature option, we're going to press the C key to configure it manually. Now, if it says if it, it did not find any hard disk drives, then you need to power off. And you need to, you need to make sure your hard disk is IDE. So I'm going to shut down my guest. Edit virtual machine settings. And as you can see, my hard disk is uh, SCSI instead of IDE so that causes a problem in DVM so we're going to remove it and then click the add button again choose hard disk click next change that to IDE click next again choose an existing so we can choose our previous disk and head to our virtual machine library so 2267 video choose our hard disk and click finish and now our hard disk, is, hard disk is IDE, so we're going to click OK, and we're going to try to boot into the setup yet again. Setup is inspecting our hardware configuration, and most cases you won't need to um, do any of this stuff. Okay. So now we're back into the text portion of the setup. Now we're going to press enter, press enter again, and press the C key again, F8. And we're going to attempt to create a partition. Um, sometimes this is hit or miss. Um, some, at some points it will format the partition properly. Like for example, it might do this um, zero megabytes free like it's doing now, um, which if it does that to you, then what you need to do is you will need to First of all, shut down your machine, edit your settings, add a floppy drive, so choose floppy drive, click finish, 
use a floppy file floppy image file that is and I'm going to pick my image file and I'm going to choose a Windows Me image because that is the most recent boot disk I can find that isn't a s specific setup disk. Start computer with CD-ROM support. F disk. Yes. Yes again. Choose three. Choose four. Choose one. Choose Y. Press escape. 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 Control. Insert. So it can reboot. Start with CD-ROM support again. Go to F disk again. Yes. Press 1. Press 1 again. Yes. Escape. Control insert again. So we can reboot and work on the hard disk. Start with CD ROM support again. And now we're back at the DOS prompt. Now we're going to do format C colon Y for yes. And it will format pretty fast because it's in a VM. Enter a volume label. So Whistler 2267 is going to be mine. And then we're done here. So what we're going to do is we're going to first detach the floppy drive. Press Control Insert. Twice, that is. Press Escape. CD-ROM drive. Press any key to get into the CD-ROM. And we're back at the Whistler setup where we can actually install Whistler this time. So other than what you just saw, Whistler 2267 is a pretty seamless setup. And you'll see what I'm talking about within the next few minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to press enter again, enter, C key, F8, press enter, choose leave the current file system intact, and allow it to Check the drive, copy files, and then after this is done, boot into the GUI portion of the setup. Okay, it's initializing the configuration, and we can press enter to restart. Now we're going to see the Whistler boot screen which is one that I absolutely love, by the way. And we're going to boot into the GUI portion of the setup. As you can see, it's quite similar to Windows Me's GUI setup, where it has the same background and a very, very similar logo. The only difference in the logo is it says Microsoft Codename Whistler instead of Windows Windows Millennium. Um, this dialog box is very similar to Neptune, believe it or not. Um, except the only difference is the Neptune logo is where the Whistler logo was. And this is pretty much the same as Windows 2000 and any Windows 2000 based operating system. Or NT based operating system really. So now it's going to install devices, which, again, pretty fast, because we're running in a VM, and I'm running it on an SSD. Um, you may not have as much luck with a an HDD. The way I see Whistler is, I see Whistler as the gateway to modern computing. And the reason why I see it that way is because this is what brought all of the uh, graphical design changes, and basically revolutionized the computer operating system. Now, granted, Apple technically beat them to it, but we're not doing Apple videos right now, so I'm going to not talk about that. 
Anyways, so, because if you look at XP, the graphical design changes are so significant and so new to people that it literally revolutionized um, home computing and it turned it into something that was more of a home-based solution than a business-based solution for the first time ever. And it was finally all in one with Windows XP, where you had different editions instead of two different operating system lines, like you did with the 9X series and the NT series. So now we're at the regional settings. Um, we're going to choose our keyboard layout and our language. Um, this is automatically set for me because I am English United States for both. So we are going to click next. Uh, we're going to type our name and organization. Click next again. Name our VM. We're actually really, it's naming our quote unquote computer, but same thing to me. So Whistler 2267-BM. Enter your administrator password. Um, if you see this message, then you just need to shorten your um, computer name. Click next. Choose your time zone. Mine's Easter. Click next. And now it's going to install the networking components. Okay, so I'm going to choose typical settings. You can choose custom settings if you want to specify a different IP address, slash gateway, slash uh, whatever. So click next. Um, I'm not going to make this a member of a domain. So we're going to click next again. Although you can make this a member of a domain. Um, but the only thing is you will not see the new logon screen that is introduced in this build. Okay, so now it's going to install components um, by just copying files and installing various things, like the control panel and every other program that's built in with a Windows computer. And a few new ones that we will cover later in a different video, that is. Alright, now it's installing start menu items and saving settings, registering components, and removing temporary files. This is basically what it does for a normal Windows 2000 setup, except it only shows one of the steps at a time down here with a progress bar. Um, if you can't tell, this is this kind of screen is where the XP GUI setup actually came from. Um, XP has the progress bar, for example, except XP's is green. Has the text here. It has the modules. For example, collecting information, dynamic update, etc., etc. Um, it has the Microsoft logo. It has this little slideshow. And basically, the only difference is it's all blue. And, of course, these have the radio buttons. Okay, so now it's finished with the GUI portion of the setup. And it is going to reboot into the OS. Where we will see my other favorite part of Whistler very, very soon. Fingers crossed that this is actually going to work because I've not had very much success with this actually. On my physical machines, that is. Alright, here's my other favorite part. It doesn't look that great right now, um, mainly because there are no video drivers installed. Which is about to change because I have video drivers for it that work just fine. So, alright, we're at the Welcome to the Network Identification Wizard. So, click Next. Um, I'm going to choose the first option, click Next, and then click Finish. And now it's going to log me on. Enter your administrator password. As you can see, it's just as good as Windows 2000 when it comes to audio drivers, which is amazing because you can't say that about some builds of Windows. Okay, so now we're going to install drivers. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to removal devices, IDE, settings, or CD, DVD, IDE, excuse me. We're going to choose 
V uh, TCB VMR drivers. Click OK. And this is the collection book VMware drivers that I used in my previous video. Um, link will be in the description in case you want to use them. So we're going to go to my computer. Uh, make sure it's attached, of course. And as you can see. Okay, so to install these drivers, we are going to close this window first of all. Start. Right click my computer. Go to settings. Excuse me, properties. Hardware, Device Manager, right click on our VGA compatible video controller, click Update Driver, install the software automatically, click Yes, allow to copy files, and install the driver, and then we are going to reboot. So turn off computer, click on Restart. And this is the beautiful walk-on screen that I love so much. Um, there's also a third part, by the way, I will show you in a couple of minutes here. You know, I ask myself quite often, what happened to Microsoft's creativity? It just doesn't seem to be there anymore. Because, man, you gotta admit, that was a pretty nice looking walk-on screen. Plus, you include the sounds and all that stuff. It, 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 it sounds pretty awesome, you know? going to type our password right click properties settings uh, I'm going to adjust my resolution Oop, that's big anyways I'm going to judge my uh, adjust my resolution excuse me apply okay click yes um and then this is the cool part I'm going to show you so I'm going to choose my theme, and I'm going to choose the professional theme, which is the theme that comes with the operating, this operating system. And you'll see in a second, as I click log off, the sounds. So there's the ta-da, but wait until you see us logging on. Yes, it's the Windows 95 sound. And it is so cool. You may not think so, but I think so. And that's what matters. <laughs> so anyways, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, then click the like button. If you disliked it, then that button works too. And subscribe to our channel. And donate to our Patreon. Assuming it's still up, I might need to look at that. And we will see you in the next one. Take care. One thing I forgot to add. Yes, this gray part is a bug. It is not part of the background. I promise. It That happens with any background you choose, including this one. Except this is a lot worse. And I don't know if it's just that the files are incomplete or something, or if they just didn't put them in all the way or whatever, but that's just how it is. But anyways, talk to you later. Bye.